toward zero. Drop me as close to Stark Head as you can get. I won't need picking up. Audrey? What a surprise. It's been too long. I'm glad we can be friends again, Neville. If you're sure Kay won't mind. I can't keep waiting for you, Kay. We need a plan. I've got a plan, Teddy. Let me tell you all about it. Audrey's better now. It's time for you to come back. Love, Mother. Aunt Camilla, what are you doing out of no. bed? Look, let me close the window no. before you catch your No, death. leave it open, Mary. Look, there's a man up on Stark Head. Call the Coast Guard, Mary, quickly before... Yes, I'll, I'll call him now. Don't do it. Stop and think. Turn round, go back. Don't do it, man. Come on! Stop thinking! Do it now! Do it! Yeah. Towards zero, certain people are converging from all over the world, from the routine of their everyday lives into someone else's plan for their lives or their deaths because someone else is mapping them as well as you and I. The murderer is also keeping track, planning every step, as they're all drawn together to a certain point, to Gull's point. Yeah, just leave me here. Oh, good, you're awake. I'm not. Mr. McQuarter, you may have a few bumps and bruises. A few but, bumps and bruises. But I am the genuine invalid here. This is the first time I have left my house since Mr. Chamberlain waved his scrap of paper. It's quite an occasion, so I suggest you sit up and take notice. I didn't ask for any guests. I don't even know you. I'm Lady Tresselian, and I'm your saviour. I saw you from my window at Gull's Point across the bay. I alerted the Coast Guard. It does not occur to you, my lady, that when a man jumps from Stark Head, he does not wish to be rescued. It did occur to me, yes, but then I decided you must have been wrong. Wrong? Tell me why you did it, and I'll tell you why you were wrong. Uh, I can't begin to... Six years it's taken me to finally make that decision. <laughs> so how can you tell me that in two minutes you figured out I'm wrong? A premonition about Mr. Chamberlain's paper was not why I talked to my bed. My husband died that night. His boat capsized in the waters below Stark Head. I wanted to die too. But like you, I wasn't brave enough at first, so I have dwindled. Six years. And then I saw you and I realised it wasn't all for nothing. I was there at that moment for a purpose to save your life. And you will have a purpose, too. You can't know that. Not in you. Not till your purpose becomes clear. Until then, you just have to trust that there will be a reason why you're alive. And not to go trying to kill yourself again. I have nowhere else to go. I can't go back. Have you not been listening, Mr McQuarter? You must trust that the Lord or, or the fates or Lady Tresillian shall provide. You can come back with me to Gull's Point and start again. Gull's Point, perched on a cliff battered by the tides that wash to and from the icy English Channel. A world away from the French Riviera, where Neville and Kay Strange are playing tennis in the sun. Apparently unaware of the bigger game that's taking place. Oh, you're too fast for me, Kay. And too beautiful. Ah, flatter me all you like. I'm still furious with you. <sighs> what for? Gulf Point. I know we have to suck up to Lady T every now and then. Oh, it's not sucking up. She's practically my mother. But why does it have to be then? When we could be yachting with Shirty. Wouldn't that be more fun? Life can't always be fun, little Kay. <sighs> Lady T detests me. Camilla loves you dearly. She just doesn't believe in divorce. She loves Audrey dearly. If only you did too, she'd be over the moon. 
Hmm. Well, maybe there is a way. To go yachting instead? To do both. Shirty in July, my tournament in August, and Gull's Point in September. But Audrey's always there in September. So she can keep Camilla happy. Take the pressure off you. Have you gone completely mad, Neville? We can't share a house with your ex-wife. Not even for a week. Just think how much easier it would be if we were all friends. I know that's what she wants. How do you know? I bumped into her the other day. You did what? In the park. We had a polite chat. It was nice. Oh, I'm delighted for you both. Oh, don't be like that. She asked after you. She actually asked if we could be there in September. Uh, she's up to something. She's moved on, Kay. Why can't we? Mary Aldin, with a streak of white in her black hair since birth, is already at Gull's Point. Despite many years dreaming she might one day get away. Exercising the leg, Mr. McQuirter. Uh, sorry, Mary, I mustn't stop. Would you mind if I walk with you? I was, um, wondering, whereabouts are you from, exactly? Why do you want to know? I thought it might be a nice place to go, Scotland. Well, there are nicer places. I know, but I can't get to them. I can't really get to Scotland unless Aunt Camilla lets me. But it wouldn't take long and it wouldn't cost much, would it? Well, I really can't remember. Can you not remember much about before? About what drove you to, you know, to, to do what you did? Oh, oh, what is it now? Will you excuse me? It's OK, Mary. I'll calm her down. As long as you never mention Stark Head again. I won't have it. Not in my house. Uh, Lady Tresario, uh, how are you this fine Sometimes day? I find your generation quite disgusting. Well, me too. I can only apologise. It must be Kay's idea. Scarlet toad creature. It's Audrey's letter. I thought it would cheer you up. Uh, may I read it? Yes, of course. Neville couldn't have conceived this on his own. And it's the last thing Audrey wants, whatever she claims. Neville left Audrey for Kay. Audrey tried to prove she was over it by getting together with Adrian Royd. But then he died in a car crash. Audrey went to pieces. She's only just starting to put her life back together. Now she's going to ruin it by attempting to befriend a happy couple. Doesn't make any sense. Why on earth would she go along with it? Why would Neville? Neville loves Kay. Audrey loves Neville. What could possibly go wrong? I shall change the will. I shall write to the lawyers. Well, shall I write to Audrey and Neville and, and tell them that you're not well enough to have visitors this year? <laughs> Kay will make an extra special effort to come and finish me off. No, they'll just have to come separately. Neville and his ghastly second wife in June and Audrey in September as usual. And I've no doubt Audrey will thank me for averting this disaster. Well, I'm not so sure. It reads to me like Audrey really wants it to happen. What are you talking about? Why would she? Mary, would you excuse us for a moment? I can be trusted, Mr McQuarrie. Go and polish something, Mary. No, a good girl. I didn't want to tell anyone, but I do owe you. So, if I can be of any help... Oh. Until six years ago, I was a detective in the Met. And your, your nose tells you there's no ulterior motive behind this scheme from anyone. Well, I might be wrong, but I don't know these people. No. But perhaps you should. Then you could see what's going on and help me to put a stop to it. And, and perhaps you should meet Audrey. Oh, she's such a, such a pale, wispy thing on her own. She needs a good man who understands her. Oh, you've given me a great deal, Lady Tresellian, but I, I draw the line at a mentally unstable divorcee. <laughs> but perhaps this is your purpose, Mr McWhirter. <laughs> Mary! Yes, Lady Tresellian? Mary, I want you to write back to Audrey and tell her very well. They may all come to Gull's Point. So, Mary writes to Audrey, whilst on the other side of the world, on the train from Tunis, Thomas Royd uses his good hand to write to his mother. As you'll see from the postmark, I've left Africa and the army behind. I will miss it, but there's nothing to stay for now the war is over. From your letter, it would seem I have something to come back for. I know it was always Adrian who had the... Did I almost write luck? Forgive me, Mother. I was always second best. But maybe that will be enough now. Maybe I will be enough for Audrey. Wish me luck. Luck may have its part to play. 
Fate may have a hand, but it is another hand that is planning all of this. And piece by piece, it is all coming together. And here is the final piece, the final player. Sidling up to Kay Strange as Neville plays his tournament. Forty thirty. Strange to serve. Ah, devoted wife <laughs> watches husband slash his way to victory. Ted, I didn't know you were here. <laughs> I'm always here. You should know that, Kay. Mm, Neville will be pleased. Out. Oh. Duke. Strange to serve. Well, his backhand is not bad, but he won't win. He's too good a loser. I love it that he's a good sport. So do I, if it means he'll hand over his wife. <laughs> and then what will we do, Teddy? Live on our good looks? Good looks are getting me to Gull's Point with you. <gasps> How did you manage it, Teddy? Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's definitely losing his touch, don't you think? Advantage, Connor. Tell me. Well, uh, giving dancing lessons at the Easter Head. But I'll be joining you at Lady T's at every opportunity, Kay. <clears throat> No way you're going into that nest of vipers alone. Oh, Ted. What's the matter? Aren't you pleased? Yes, but well, sometimes I get cold feet. Don't be scared, okay? It will all go to plan. Well done, darling. You were wonderful. Oh, <laughs> thought you were too busy chatting to Latimer to notice. <laughs> It's all right. I'm the man in possession, and possession is nine-tenths of the law. You're very sure of yourself. Why wouldn't I be? Fate brought us together. Don't you remember when we met at Cannes? Mm. Then I had to go on to Estoril, and suddenly, as soon as I got there, the first person I saw... My beautiful Kay. Uh, that wasn't exactly <laughs> fate, Neville. It was me. What do you mean? At Cannes. I found out where you were going next, and I made sure I got there first. <laughs> You've never told me that before. I thought you might get conceited. You're not cross, are you, Neville? No. No, not at all. I'm just beginning to understand the woman I married. <laughs> Did I say that Ted Latimer was the final player? I must have forgotten myself. Please excuse me, there's somewhere I have to be. Oh. Oh. Welcome to the Balmoral, sir. How may I... Oh. Oh, sir? May I... Uh, may I trouble you for a glass of... Uh, water quickly, James. Uh, please, sit down. Uh, oh, I, I should have got a cab. But I thought I would... You walk from the station, sir? Uh, from the Easter Head, not far. Oh, here we are now. Sip it slowly. Uh, it may not be far, but it's uphill and with the wind over the cliff top. Ah, oh, that's better. Ah. Uh, now, please tell me that my quest was not in vain. You are not fully booked. We have one room left. You truly have saved my life. You didn't like the Easter Head? It seems to have become little more than a bordello. I trust the Balmoral has not followed suit. I think you'll be very comfortable here. Good, good. I have old friends in the area, Lady Tresellian, across the bay. We can arrange a cab to the ferry any time, Mr... Lord Justice Treves. Your Honour, you'll be able to see Gull's Point from your room on the top floor. Oh, dear. Then I'm afraid I can't. Not with the stairs. But we have a lift. James will show you. This way, sir. A lift? Well, I never... This is very nice... Very nice indeed. It seems there are some changes worth making after all. Thomas! Over here! Oh, <laughs> thank goodness you're here. Oh, that'll do. Ah, where's the car? Did you get to see much of Africa? Was it beautiful? It was a war. No, not a holiday. <laughs> yes, afterwards, I could see its merits. Oh, I don't know why you'd ever come back to this place, though I'm glad you have. Things have been so difficult at the house. Has Audrey not come? Uh, no, no, she's there, as usual. But the rest of it is, is not at all usual. Ah, uh, here we are. I gave the driver the, uh, uh, the day off. Are you all right with the bags? Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
So what's all this difficulty at the house, then? <sighs> Neville's there, too. And his wife. Everyone's pretending to get on ever so well, but you can feel it in the air. Trouble building up. What is it about Audrey? Do you know, Mr. McWhirter? Well, what is what, Mrs. Strange? Look at her, out on the terrace with my husband. She hardly says a word. She barely smiles, never laughs. And yet Neville hasn't once looked back this way at me. How does Audrey contrive to have that effect? I don't know that it's contrived. It looks to me like she'd rather be alone. Oh, yes, but isn't that all part of the effect? The tragic ex-wife alone in the world. And you all fall for it. He must have remembered you. They're coming in. <clears throat> Audrey's had a marvellous idea. G&T's all round. Very thoughtful, Audrey. I could do with a drink. It is so hot. I was hoping it would be cooler outside. Well, take the window seat, Audrey. There's a bit of a breeze coming in there. I'll get the drinks. Thank you, Neville. Yes, thank you, Neville. Won't be a tick. I love the sun. I love the way it turns my skin brown. Must be terrible for you being so pale. I try to stay in the shade. You must be the same, Mr McWhirter. Me? Well, uh, yes, I suppose The bedrooms so. are coolest. If you're really too hot, Audrey, perhaps you should go for a lie down. Yes, thank you, Kay. I might do that after my drink. <laughs> Drinks are on their way. The illustrated review's just arrived. Who wants it? Oh, thank good. You know, Give it to me. I'm sorry. I want it. Give it to me, Neville. I thought you were talking to me. Of course Kay must have it. Don't be silly, Audrey. Here you are. Uh, Neville? How could you? Come on, Kay. Leave don't be me so alone. I'm so sorry, Neville. Should I go and talk to her? No point. Come outside and talk to me instead. Well, what about your drinks? Oh, I suppose I'll have to have them. Audrey! Oh. I was told Audrey wasn't here. She just left. But I wouldn't bother going after her when Neville's in tow. You must be Thomas Royd. Who are you? And what precisely is your interest in Audrey? I'm McWhirter, and I have no interest. I'm the disinterested observer. The witness, if you will. And what does that mean? Witness to what? I don't know. But from the way things are going, something's bound to happen. So, here we all are. <laughs> Andres Wilson. Ma'am. And open another bottle. Everyone seems thirsty tonight. Oh, there's more to come, Aunt Camilla. Lord Justice Treves is due to join us. Who? Oh, an old friend of Sir Matthew's from Chancery and an astute judge of character, so no need to be nervous. Why would he be nervous? Some people are of a nervous disposition, Thomas. We can't all go marching round the globe blowing elephants and nuts as to smithereens. And I also invited Mr Latimer, but perhaps he's forgotten. Oh. Teddy will be here. He always is. Uh, Wilson, order his glass. Oh, I'm fine, yes. thank you, Neville. Well, let us begin before it gets cold. Mm. Oh, yes. I thought it might be nice to go sailing tomorrow. Mm. Good idea, Audrey. I, I could take you. Uh, we could all go. Uh, make a day of it. We're playing oh. golf tomorrow, Neville. Oh, well, my game's gone right off, but you and Ted can go. Kay's got a natural swing. You don't play any sport, do you, Audrey? I used to play a little tennis. You used to play the piano. I always wondered how your small hands crossed the octave. I have very long little fingers. Mm. Okay. You must be selfish, then. If you're unselfish, you have short little fingers. And I have the shortest little finger in the room. <laughs> <laughs> ah, only your left, though, Neville. Left is what you're born with. The right is what you make of it. Mm, I don't believe in fortune-telling. Someone read my hand and told me I'd have three children. Really? Let me see. Oh. Mm, that's not children. That's three journeys across water. Mm. Across the ocean? Is that what it means? Mm. That's all the ferry across the bay and back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry I'm late. Uh, oh, Stop no. to help this old fellow whose cab had a flat. Oh. Turns out he was heading here too. Lord Justice oh. Trees, it's good to see you. Uh, you're a judge. Latimer's nervous now. <laughs> <laughs> no need to be nervous. I'm not a judge tonight. I'm on my holidays and determined to enjoy him. Oh. Uh, sorry, please, do excuse me. Well, uh, are you all right, Mr. Chase? Judge? Listen, uh, some water? Y yeah. Yes. Thank you, young man. Yes, my... My heart has been on the brink of giving up, but... 
It turns out I may last the summer now that the Balmoral has installed a lift. Splendid. <laughs> Come and sit by me and tell me something fascinating. Uh, thank you. I never read detective stories. They never seem real. Detective stories begin in the wrong place. They begin with the murder, but the murder is at the end. The story begins long before that, years sometimes, with all the causes and events that bring certain people to a certain place at a certain time. All of them converging towards a given spot, and then the time comes. Zero hour. Yes, all of them converging towards zero. Towards zero. An interesting theory, Mr. Trees, but in my experience, most murders are not premeditated. In your experience? Look at her flaunting herself for all to see. She's trying to attract her husband's attention. <laughs> Peculiar that she isn't succeeding. The current Mrs. Strange is a singularly attractive woman. You mean to tell me you can understand a man leaving a person of rare quality for a cane? Ephemeral refinement may be rare, but it is easily cast aside for passion and fire. Although these infatuations seldom last. Neville broke her heart. She never wanted to see him again. And yet, here she is, dancing with him. And Mrs. Strange with Mr. Latimer. Oh. Now he can dance. Indeed. Although the last man I saw with a head shaped like that got ten years penal servitude for brutal assault. I'm afraid that's another theory I'll have to disagree with, Your Honor. You can't tell a criminal tendency just from looking. That is true. Unless you've seen them before. <laughs> Don't mind that I asked you, Thomas. I so rarely get to dance. If your arm hurts, we can stop. I've managed tougher tasks than dancing, Mary. Of course. Sorry. You've been on many journeys, haven't you? Many journeys over water. What? Well, like we were saying at dinner. Oh, uh, I wasn't listening. Would you rather lead? You'd get a better view. View of what? It's really too hot to dance. Well, we could go outside if you like. We should stop, Neville. Sit down for a while. We can do whatever you like, Audrey. Oh, really? Oh, ah, oh, wait, my, my cuff button is caught in your hair. Please, be quick, Neville, you're I'm sorry, I seem to be, seem to be all thumbs. What the hell does he think he's doing? Thomas, it's none of our business. Don't stare. Look at them. I won't have it in my house. You can't stop it, Camilla. Towards zero. What do you mean, Mr. Treves? Yes, ma'am. What have you seen? He talks about me misbehaving in public. Leave him to it, Kate. Not a chance. <coughs> oh, really? Sorry, but we were the only ones really dancing. Uh, go on, Mr. Treves. You're right, Mr. McWhirter, that most murders are lamentably improvised. But a few exceptional cases can quite <coughs> take your breath away. Perhaps we should call it a night. Or hmm? put the music back on. No, we should all stay and listen to Mr. Treves instead. I like murder stories. No, please, go on. The case I am thinking of concerned a child. The facts were as follows. Two children were playing with bows and arrows. One child killed the other. There was an inquest, the surviving child was distraught, and it was deemed... A regrettable accident. Was that all? Far from it. It was stated at the inquest that the children were unused to bows and arrows and, in consequence, shot wildly and ignorantly, causing the accident. But, some time previously, a farmer had passed through a nearby wood and had seen in a clearing a child practicing with a bow and arrow. What did the farmer do? The child's future was at stake. He felt the child should be given the benefit of the doubt. But you have no doubt about what really happened? I believe it was a particularly ingenious murder. Mm -hmm. Planned down to every detail beforehand by a child with murderous intention in its heart. What happened to the child? Its name was changed after the inquest. The child is now an adult. 
with a new name, a new life. But has it still got a murderer's heart? Well, we'll never know. Hmm? Oh, no. It was a long time ago, but there was a certain physical peculiarity. I would recognize my little murderer anywhere. I hope it's not too far past your bedtime, Your Honor. I seem to cause quite an exodus with my story. Well, I wouldn't know about that. We're here now, and that's the main thing. Ah, safe and sound. And a porter awaits. How efficient. That's no porter. Ah, uh -huh. I was just taking a walk. The call of the wild, Mr. Roy. He nips into the east ahead, more likely. I just watch your step, oh. sir. There. Here, you just uh, take my arm. Get the door, Latimer. Yeah, don't need to be told. Ah, thank you, Paul. That's it. Oh, dear. That's it, sir. I don't have my spectacles, but that <clears throat> sign does not look auspicious. Lift out of order. Bad luck, Your Honor. Oh, I could carry you up if it wasn't for my bad arm. Oh, there's no need, really. As long as I take it slowly, I shall manage. Uh, you two go on back. Are you sure? He just mm. said so, didn't he? Don't argue with the judge. Yes, thank you, Latimer. I'll be better off alone. Good night, then, sir. See you around, Mr. T. Better off alone. Slowly now. One. My little murderer. After all these years. Two. The planning, the practice, the pretense takes your breath away. Three. I know it's you, but how can I know if there is still a murderer's heart? Is there still a... <gasps> Detective stories begin in the wrong place. They begin with the murder, but the murder is at the end. The story begins long before that, years before sometimes, with all the causes and events that bring certain people to a certain place at a certain time, all of them converging towards a given spot. And then the time comes, zero hour. Yes, all of them converging towards zero, towards zero. When a man jumps from Stark Head, he does not wish to be rescued. Have you gone completely mad, Neville? We can't share a house with your ex-wife, not even for a week. Neville loves Kay. Audrey loves Neville. What could possibly go wrong? <sighs> I was always second best, but maybe that will be enough now. Maybe I will be enough for Audrey. Oh, Teddy, sometimes I get cold feet. Don't be scared, Kay. It will all go to plan. Everyone's pretending to get on ever so well, but you can feel it in the air. Trouble building up. Neville thinks Audrey is this saint who's forgiven him. But she hasn't. She hates him. I am not a judge tonight. I am on my holidays and determined to enjoy... M oh. What the hell does Neville think he's doing? I won't have it in my house. One child killed the other. It was a particularly ingenious murder. There was a certain physical peculiarity. I would recognize my little murderer anywhere. I know it's you, but how can I know if there is still a murderer's heart? Is there still a... Ah! Welcome to the Balmoral, sir. I am here to see Mr. Treves. Oh, yes. Um, if you'll just come up in the lift with me. Thank you. After you, sir. They thought it best to keep him in his room for now. Uh, this way, please. Sorry, uh, there's something I'm not following here. Uh, Sergeant Jones and Dr. Lazenby will explain. Uh, Sergeant, your man has arrived. Uh, Sergeant? Jones, sir. Thanks for coming. 
This is the victim. Mr. Treves. I'm afraid we had to move him, sir. Couldn't leave him lying on the stairs in high season. He was on the stairs. Mm, that's what brought on the heart attack. Overexertion. Doctors confident it's natural causes, but we wanted to bring the Met in anyway. Apparently this Treves was some bigwig lawyer in London. Mr. Treves was a bigwig judge, not a lawyer. And I'm not from the Met. I'm from Gulls Point. I met Mr. Treves there last night. Oh, I do apologise. I just assumed that. Oh, the receptionist must have thought so too. You do have that look about you. Where's the detective then? Should be here by now. I should get back. Break the news to Lady Tresselian. Mm. Uh, tell her we'll be over later. Do a few interviews. Just for form, you know. There's nothing suspicious. Of course. I'd hate to think all that business last night put any strain on his heart. Uh, don't worry, Lady Tresselian. <sighs> if there's anything untoward, the detective will get to the bottom of it. So he'll, he'll want to talk to us all? All except me. I'll be leaving by the next train. You can't go now. He might know me. It's six years since you left. I didn't leave, Lady Tresselian. I was set up, f framed for corruption. I lost my job, my wife, everything. Yeah, but you were innocent. As far as the Met's concerned, I'm a bent ex copper <gasps> If there's anything suspicious, he'll zero in on me. Well, even more so if you run away. That's why I have to be fast. The train isn't so fast, and neither are you with that leg. They will find you. And if they're as corrupt as you say, they'll be hanging you for murder. And don't tell me you still want to end your life because the nurse told me different. What nurse? At the hospital. She said your type never tries again. You're, you're ready for a fresh start. But I can't do that if this man drags up my past. But you're an innocent man. So stay and behave like one. Besides, you promised me you'd look after Audrey. Audrey has enough people to look after her. I sincerely hope you don't mean Neville. He spends far more time with her than with his current wife, and Royd is besotted. Oh, poor Thomas doesn't have a hope. Well, that doesn't stop him. And it doesn't stop you and Mary being besotted with Thomas. It all just adds to the fun. I wouldn't call any of this fun. Neither would Mr. Treves. Oh. Do you think there was something untoward in his death? The doctor's sure it was natural causes. Because if you do, you have to stay. To look after us all. Well, I'm sure the doctor's right. But I'll stay, if you wish. Oh. Please, could you put some on my back, Mary? I'm sorry to be a pain. Of course. Kay might think she looks stunning in that swimsuit, but wait till she gets into the water. It'll be freezing. We should warn her. She wouldn't warn you, Audrey. Perhaps not, then. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Too late. Not so stunning now. Oh, Mary, you're terrible. <laughs> oh, Mr. Latimer's coming to the rescue. Oh, no. Here's Neville getting there first. And Latimer bows out amicably as if he was some kind of gentleman. Mr. Latimer reminds me of a lizard sunning himself. A pair of crocodiles, he and Kay. A thousand pities that they didn't... I'm sorry, I know you've got over it, Audrey, but I oughtn't to keep bringing it up. Well, what were you going to say? Well, just that if they had married, then you and Neville might still be together. There's nothing for me to get over. I hope... But I hope with all my heart that Kay and Neville are very happy. Well, that's very nice of you, Audrey. We've all got to go on living our lives in the present. I suppose, but it's all just exciting to me. People like Kay and Neville and Ted Latimer. They're so different from anything in my life. Even you, Audrey. I know you've been unhappy, but I think even that is better than, well, than nothing. Mary, I never knew you felt that way. I don't, not really. I'm just tired today. It would be understandable, looking after Aunt Camilla all these years. I'm really quite contented. And I have my secret vices to keep me occupied. Mm. What are they? Plans, I think, over. And little experiments. Seeing if I can make people react in certain ways. You sound almost sadistic. <laughs> it's just childish fun. <sighs> have you experimented on me? I couldn't, even if I wanted to, Audrey. Of all the people here, I can never tell what you're thinking. I'm cold. I think I'd better go and get dressed. 
water looks so beautiful, but it's freezing. Should have come in July. Then you wouldn't have got to go yachting. And you would have sulked, little Kay. I'd rather miss yachting than have to put up with this. I don't know why I let you talk me into coming. I was trying to make you happy. Is that what you were doing last night? Dancing with Audrey? You were dancing with Latimer. Teddy's my friend. He's our friend. Audrey's our friend. When will you realise, Neville? She hates you for leaving her and she hates me because it was my fault. Oh, your little fantasies don't even add up. One moment you're jealous we might still be in love, the next she apparently hates me. Let's just enjoy ourselves. Hmm? Shall we wander back to the house? Why do we always have to follow Audrey? I was just wondering if anyone fancies a little tournament. Take out our frustrations. For God's sake, Neville, not everything's a game. Enjoying the sun, Mr. Latimer? Oh, uh, sorry, I can't remember. It's Mary. Mary Alden. Uh, well, Mary Alden, I suppose I'm enjoying it as much as I would anywhere else in the world. Slightly less. I only ask because I thought you might not have seen Mrs. Strange storming off. Kay? Uh, why? Why? What, what's happened? Well, perhaps storming is overstating it. I imagine that's just how she conducts herself. If you think I care what you imagine about Kay or me, you are sadly mistaken. Oh, you don't like me. Do you expect me to? I haven't done anything to you. You're so smug, all of you. Roped off from the common herd, looking at people like me and Kay as though we were the animals outside. What do I have to be smug about? I have to do everything Lady Tresselian asks, or else I get nothing. Well, perhaps we're all trapped in some way. Perhaps. <laughs> Have you always been in love with Kay? Pretty well. And she with you? Yeah, I thought so until Neville Strange came along. Why don't you get away from here? Well, why don't you? Because... Exactly. You're a nice creature, Mary, but you don't know much about the animals prowling round your enclosure. Now, tell me, which way does she go? What are you looking at, Audrey? Thomas, how long have you been there? Uh, a while. I was looking across the bay at Stark Head. It looks so close, you could almost paddle across. No, not at this tide. When the river's running out, the current would sweep you right under. But if it's high tide and you're a strong swimmer, stronger than me, you could make it. Oh, poor Thomas. Well, there's plenty worse off than me, Audrey. The ferryman told me people have flung themselves off Stark Head before now. But I'm not like that. Not too much to live for. I wonder how they felt when they were falling. I found your earring from last night. Oh, thank you. Do you wear them to hide the scar where old Bounce a bit you? I mean, you were just a baby. Oh, you know me so well, Thomas. I know you don't need to hide anything, Audrey. You're far more beautiful than Kay. Kay is really very lovely. Oh, she'll do for Neville. But you're... You're better than that. I, I never knew why you married him. Because I fell in love. And because I always felt not quite real. Neville was always so happy, so sure of himself. You're not like me. A tongue tied over the crippled arm. <laughs> you know, don't you, that I've... That I've, I've always, always... Oh, don't. Thomas, please. I know exactly what you've been through, Audrey. What do you mean? Mother wrote to me. I know exactly. Do you see? I didn't think anyone here knew. Don't say a thing. I just want to know that you're really all right, that it's all over in the past. Yes, it's all over. Fancy a game, McWhirter? No, thank you. I have to go out. Oh, well, put the word about then, will you? Well, I'll see. No, oh, no need. Here's Audrey and Thomas. Grab yourselves rackets. Oh, sorry, Thomas, you don't play, do you? You're very welcome to watch. I'll be indoors, Audrey, if you want to talk. Hmm. Who wants to talk on a beautiful day like this? I'm not sure about this, Neville. It's such a long time. Oh, nonsense. You're a natural. It'll all come back to you. But these shoes... Well, take them off. Come on, now. I'll help you. Neville, what are you doing? Oh, I've seen them before, haven't I? And yet... 
I always forget who else could sit in the sun all day and stay so very pale. What if Kay? We're only playing tennis. Now, can you remember your grip? Here, let me show you. I remember. But I, I don't think I want to play. Why not? Because of Kay. Because it's been so long and it's so hot out here. Everything's all right, isn't it, Audrey? Between us? Yes, of course. I'm not sure. I mean, we're friends, aren't we? Oh, yes, I hope so. Then... Then don't worry about Kay. She's your wife. You should be playing with her. You're my wife, Audrey. And I don't want to play anymore. I want... Good morning, you... sir. Madam. Oh. <laughs> Hello there. Mr. Strange, isn't it? And Mrs. Strange? Yes, sir. But not um, Kay Strange. I mean, I'm sorry. This is my ex-wife, Audrey. Can we help you? I do hope so. Detective Inspector Leach, Scotland Yard. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Is there anything more I can help you with, Inspector? I don't believe so, Lady Tresselian. I'm fairly satisfied the doctor's right. It was just one of those sad things. Fairly satisfied? There is one of your guests I haven't managed to track down, a Mr. McWhorter. Everyone's mentioned him, but no one seems to know anything about him. I know him, and I can assure you he's not involved. Uh, you don't have to speak for uh -oh. me, Lady Tresselian. I apologise for my absence, Inspector. I left before you arrived, and have only just returned. We must have met somewhere else, then. I know you, don't I? Possibly. Whereabouts did you serve? Ah, I'm afraid I missed out, sir. Stayed behind in the net. It's just as important, keeping the country safe for our return. Did you want to ask me some questions? No point, really, sir. Others have accounted for your whereabouts, and now I'm fully satisfied that I'm wasting my time and yours. Oh. But you don't think it was murder, then? Never thought so for a moment. Good oh. day, Lady Tresselli and Mr. Good day. Good day. Uh, may I walk with you, oh. Inspector? If you can keep up, I've got a train to catch. Did you speak to Royd and Latimer? They were the last people to see Mr. Treves alive. Well, they said the lift at the Balmoral had an out-of-order sign on it. But I've just been to check, and the lift was working fine this morning. It must have been fixed. It wasn't broken. It never was out of order. They don't even have such a sign. Why would Royd and Latimer lie? Someone could have put a fake sign there. Someone who knew about Treves' condition. Knew if he had to take the stairs, it would be fatal. It was murder. Why would someone go to all that trouble to bump off a harmless old man? Mr. Treves told a story about a child who was a killer who may kill again. I'm sure he said it as a warning to someone here, to let them know he was onto them. He said he'd recognize them anywhere because of a physical peculiarity. Some kind of deformity or flaw. Will you do me a favor, Mr. McWhorter? Anything to help. Stop letting your imagination run away with you. If there was a sign, it was probably some silly prank. Mr. Treves died of a heart attack. There's no murder here and no murderer, past or present. You get a nose for these things after a while, Mr. McWhorter. So please, try and curb the amateur flights of fancy. I... I don't consider myself an amateur. It can't be easy. Seeing all that action, then coming back and having nothing much to do. Lack of purpose. No heroics. Well, my suggestion is to enjoy the peace. Some of us have work to do. Good day, sir. I believe it's going to rain, Mr McQuarter, if you're hoping to bathe. Thank you for the warning, Mrs Strange. Now, Audrey, please. <laughs> Less confusing under the circumstances. The circumstances, yes. How well you put it. I wasn't going to bathe. I thought I'd take a walk up to Stark Head. You should be careful up there. I've heard terrible stories. Well, you can't let fear hold you back. Uh, care to join me? No, I, I don't think so. I just want to be alone. You're always alone, Audrey. Even with all your admirers. Why is that? I'm just trying to take my mind off poor Mr. Treves. I keep thinking about that story he was telling about the child. I, I don't really remember. Well, the little killer with the physical peculiarity. I'm sorry, I was preoccupied. With the circumstances? I'd better get back. It's almost dinner and... And it's going to rain, yes, you said. Uh, but I'd rather take my chances on a storm at Stark Head than spend another evening with that lot. Wouldn't you? 
I have to go. Shouldn't the maid be doing that, Mary? The maid burst into tears and ran out. Everyone's getting so het up. I wonder if it might be better just to get it all out in the open somehow. No, I'm not getting het up. No, you're a tower of strength, Thomas. But everyone else... And it's all because of this stupid idea of Audrey's that they could all be friends. Oh, it was Neville's idea, and it has singularly failed. Kay is getting quite beside herself. Dangerous woman, Kay. If she got her temper up. I can't help sympathising with her. The way Neville looked at Audrey last night. Well, people like Neville think that they can have everything they want. Well, he can't have Audrey. I wonder. Evening, Mary. And Thomas. Oh. What a pleasure. I'm going to dress for dinner. I'll try not to take it personally. You ought to, Neville. Thomas wanted to marry Audrey and you cut him out. She's too good for that wet fish and too good for me. We should let her enjoy her freedom. If she does enjoy it. You think she's not happy? I haven't the faintest idea. Who knows what Audrey's really feeling? I don't suppose you know where she is right now. Uh, don't come in. I got caught in the rain. The fire's out in my room. Look at me. I'm standing so close to it and still shivering. Audrey, can I talk to you? You'd better not. No. So you know what I want to say. You've known all along, haven't you? That's why you asked me here. The people will be coming down for dinner. I Can't think... we go back to where we were, Audrey? Before Kay? Before Adrian. Forget everything that's happened. We can't forget Kay. She'll be sensible. You think so? I'll tell her the truth. That you're the only woman I've ever loved. My marriage to Kay was the biggest mistake I ever made. I... Oh, sorry to interrupt this touching scene. I'm sorry, Kay. I, I got caught in the rain. Then you'd better go and put some clothes on. Dinner's ready. Everyone's very quiet tonight. It's always quiet without Aunt Camilla. Is she all right? She's dining in her room. <clears throat> Actually, she said she couldn't eat. Too upset about Mr. Treves. We all are. Poor old fellow. Now that detective's gone, nosing around. I noticed Latimer went into hiding at the Easter Head. Teddy's not hiding. There's a band playing tonight. Maybe we could go over later. Well, that other chap went into hiding, McWhorter. I think he went for a walk. Taking him under your wing, Audrey. Why shouldn't she? Would anyone like more soup? Thomas? You'll have quite a collection, Audrey. Royd with his arm, McWhorter limping along behind. There's more to being a good husband than having a good backhand. Thomas, please, don't get drawn in. Are you planning to be someone's husband? I don't plan or presume, Neville. How do I take advantage? Is everyone ready for mains, then? Neville hasn't been taking advantage. It was Audrey who planned all this. Neville's just getting sucked in. Oh, for God's sake, Kay. I'm sorry you feel that, Kay, but I really haven't... I've seen you leading him on. I know what you're up to. Kay, please, she's not up to anything. Audrey is still in love with Neville, and he's in love with her. There, now, I've, I've, it's been said. Mary, you shouldn't have. You should never have. I'm only trying to help. I don't believe it. Is it true, Audrey? Is it Audrey? What a fool I've been. Excuse me. A fool? You think you've been a fool? Audrey! Leave her, Thomas. Just let them all fight it out. It's got nothing to do with us. Please remove your hand from me, Mary. Excuse me. You leave her. Come bullheaded after me. Get her to give you a divorce. And now you want her back. Not now, Kay. Not here. You dragged me here. Outside. Now. What is it you want? Well... I'm sorry, little Kay, but it's no good. You and I don't belong. So let's try and part friends. What exactly are you suggesting? You can divorce me for desertion. And you'll ask sweet Audrey to marry you again? Yes, if she'll have me. And you'll be free to find a better man. Naturally, I'll see you're well provided for. Oh, never mind the bribes, Neville. I shan't divorce you. I married you because I loved you. I know when you turned against me. It was when you found out I followed you to Estoril. You thought it was fate. And it's upset your vanity to think it was just little Kay. Well, I'm not ashamed. I wanted you and I got you. And that sly old cat's not going to get you back. I'll kill you first. I'll see you both dead. You hear? I'll... Ah! 
Kay, are you all right? Well, stay away from me, Neville, or else... Kay! Sorry, Mary. I'll, I'll clear up the glass. Wilson and I can do it. Thank you, Mary. I'm so sorry about all of this. Audrey's gone to bed. Doesn't wish to be disturbed. I'll go over to the Easter Head, have a drink with Latimer. Uh, Lady Tresellian would like to see you first. Now? What about? I heard everything. I apologise for the scene. I'll speak to Kay. It's not Kay's fault. I see that now. And now you must see, Neville, you cannot do it. Sorry, I can't... Your plan to divorce Kay and remarry Audrey. I will not let it happen. Surely that is my own business, Camilla. You have used my house to rekindle things with Audrey. Or else she has used Audrey it hasn't to, done to... anything wrong. Kay is your wife. I don't like her, but in this matter I find I am entirely on her side. Your duty is now to stay with her. This has absolutely nothing to do with this you. This is my house. And Audrey will be leaving it first thing tomorrow. If you go with her, you will lose the inheritance. Sir Matthew left the money to me and my Sir wife. Sir Matthew and I were married a long time faithfully. He gave me the right to change his will. I won't be held to ransom. Then go with Audrey and lose the money. I won't stand Don't for it. raise your voice at me, Neville. I tell you, I won't have it! <gasps> I was in bed, mm. Aunt Camilla. What is it? What? What, what do you want? You rang the bell. Did I? I was just about to drop off. I'm, I'm sorry, Mary. Since Neville went out, I felt quite... I'm not used to being shouted at. No. I think I'd like to see Mr. McWhirter. But he's not back. Oh, well, dear, do you think he's all right? Would you like me to go up to Stark Head in the storm and see? Why are you angry with me, Mary? If Thomas is besotted with Audrey, that's hardly my fault. You keep me here. You treat me like a servant. Oh. How can I expect him to notice me? How can I expect you anyone know you to... You are free to go whenever you please. Where could I go? You know I have nothing. You will get your reward. Well, I can't wait that long. I can't wait any longer. Oh, you're tired, Mary. So am I. Get some sleep. We'll all feel better tomorrow. Will we? Oh, Matthew. Matthew, I wish you were here. All that I was there with you, wherever you are, in heaven, on the bottom of the sea. Please look after Mr. McQuarter. I couldn't understand why he wanted to end it all, but now... Now I see when everything you thought you had is gone. Um, who's there? Oh, it's you. <gasps> oh. Towards zero. When a man jumps from Stark Head, he does not wish to be rescued. Have you gone completely mad, Neville? We can't share a house with your ex-wife, not even for a week. Neville loves Kay. Audrey loves Neville. What could possibly go wrong? <sighs> there was a certain physical peculiarity. I would recognize my little murderer anywhere. Someone knew about Mr. Tree's condition. Knew that if he had to take the stairs, it would be fatal. It was murder. I have to do everything Lady Tresellian asks, or else I get nothing. Perhaps we're all trapped in some way. You're the only woman I've ever loved. My marriage to Kay was the biggest mistake I ever made. Audrey is still in love with Neville, and he's in love with her. Mary, you shouldn't have said that. You shouldn't. You can divorce me for desertion. I'll kill you first. I'll see you both dead. Do you hear? Your plan to divorce Kay and remarry Audrey. I will not let it happen. I tell you, I won't have it. I've been very generous to you, Mary. You will get your reward. I can't wait that long. I can't wait any longer. 
Oh, Matthew, I wish you were here. Or that I was there with you, wherever you are. Uh, who's there? Oh, it's you. <gasps> oh. Lady Tresellian? Are you awake? Uh, may I come in? Oh, my. Mary? Mary? Someone! Call the police! What's that noise? What happened? Right, fetch the police. It's Lady Tresellian. Audrey, will you wake Mary? She should be here. Running the place now, McWhirter. Sorry, Mr. Stranger, can't go in there. She's my stepmother. If something's wrong... Lady Tresellian is dead. Oh, don't be silly. Let me see her. You don't want to, believe me. She's been murdered. Mr. McWhirter, oh. it's Mary. She won't wake up. Mary Alden. Hmm. Seems like the depressive type. Uh, bitter, maybe, but not depressive, Inspector Leach. Not the kind to take an overdose. People can surprise you, Mr. McWhirter. Seems you were right about there being a murderer at Gull's Point. Mary still has a chance, but Lady Tresellian wasn't so lucky. What was the time of death, Doctor? Uh, between 10pm and midnight. Mm -hmm. Death would have been instantaneous from a single blow to the head. Ah. From the niblick. From the what? That. It was lying by the bed when I found her. Ah, I'm not a golfing man. Probably why I never made Chief Inspector. Well, what do you think, Doctor? Could this niblick be our weapon? Quite easily, I should think. Mm. Except the swing would have to be left-handed. It's a right-handed club. But to cause that injury... Well, look. It would have had to be wielded in the killer's left hand. Well, there are other ways of accounting for that. I suppose the old lady turned her head just before he attacked. It was definitely a man, then? No, definitely. A woman could have landed a heavy swipe if the weapon was that niblick. So that's not definite either? Not till I've analysed the blood and hair from it. I'll have the fingerprints analysed. Lovely set this murder has left us. Might as well have left us a visiting card. He could have lost his head. Some do. Sergeant Jones, our local man, thought it might have been a burglar. A fit man with a decent rope could have accessed this window. Or any of those below. Not bad thinking for a wooden top. But inconsistent. Well, do enlighten us. Mary wasn't trying to kill herself. That would be far too convenient. So we have to assume that someone drugged her so she couldn't hear Lady Tresellian. A burglar wouldn't have done that. It's also inconsistent with the look on the victim's face. Surprise, not shock. Lady Tresellian knew her killer. Then all I have to do is to get this set of prints matched against one of our guests and we'll have the killer. Well, I have a feeling it might not be that simple, Inspector. Another amateur's hunch. Well, I, I don't know what it is, but there's... Although a... you're not actually an amateur, are you? Chief Inspector McWhirter, uh... or ex-Chief Inspector. When I got back to the yard, I checked you out. Meteoric rise up the Met, and then, what a surprise, turns out to be bent. Should have been locked up. It couldn't have been any worse. Instead, here you are, on the loose, and first on the scene at a murder, trying to steer the investigation. I have done nothing corrupt or illegal in my life. Then why lie? It's all in the past now. Motives are in the past. So are criminal records. As far as we know, you're the only guest with a record. Where were you last night? I took a walk up to Stark Head. A walk in a storm to the scene of your own suicide attempt. Mental instability at the least, eh, Doctor? It was calmer up there than it was in this house. Maybe you got the old lady to change her will, to leave you a fortune, and then bumped her off yourself. I owe Lady Tresellian my life, and will catch whoever killed her. But it's not bad thinking for a Met detective. The will is a good place to start. It'll prove my innocence and give us a clue as to who's guilty. What's that noise? Uh, oh, it's that strange fellow. Uh, I mean... He is not strange. His name is Neville Strange. Playing tennis after your stepmother's death seems pretty strange to me. Out! You can do much better than that, Kay. I don't feel like playing today. Let's try to maintain a semblance of normality. 
And I don't think we should distract the police with the details of our divorce. There's not going to be a divorce. Well, then, there's no need to mention it. <sighs> Your serve. Look at them. As if nothing had happened. I wish I could be like that. Let it all out, somehow. I don't believe you would marry him again, Audrey. It doesn't make any sense. Not after You what... promised you wouldn't talk about it, Thomas. Not to me. And please, not to the police. Oh, you can trust me, Audrey. I just wish I knew what it was you wanted. I want it all to be over. Oh! Hey, what were you looking at? Was it Audrey? Was she watching? Inspector Leach. Any news? Oh, Mr Strange. Just now, you were playing with your left hand. But yesterday, with Mrs. Audrey Strange, I noticed you held the racket in your right hand. OK, he's left-handed, so I switch over to suit. Sometimes I use the left to give the other chap a chance. He's always been sporting to a fault. <laughs> Don't suppose you play much golf, do you? Oh, as much as possible. My wife is very keen. He means me. Audrey can't play. You're not taking us out for a round, Inspector. I can't stand golf. But I have reason to believe your stepmother was killed with a... Niblick. Hmm? And I was wondering if it might be yours. No, it's missing. But it's been in this cupboard all week. Anyone could have taken it. Of course, anyone could have. What I don't understand is that nothing else has been taken. No valuables stolen. Uh, we don't believe it was a burglar, Mr Strange. But that doesn't mean that the killer won't benefit. You mean the will? don't happen to know who gets the money, do you? Camilla's. Not sure. Mary, most probably, and the servants. But she hadn't much money of her own. The fortune was to Matthews, and my stepmother only had a life interest in it. After that, it comes to me and my wife. But I have plenty to live on without it. Would you mind telling me what you did last night? It was pretty uneventful. A quiet dinner, just me, Kay, Audrey, Mary and Royd. Then my wife went to bed, and I went up to see my stepmother. Hmm. What for? She'd been upset by Treves' death. We chatted for a while, then I said goodnight to her. Must have been about 10.30. Then I went across to the Easter Head to play cards with Ted Latimer. I couldn't find him at first, but managed to track him down around 20 past 11 and had a few games. Got back here about half past two and went to bed. I didn't see or hear anything. If only I had, perhaps I could have done something. Would you mind my constable taking your fingerprints, Mr Strange? But my fingerprints are bound to be on the nibbling. No need to worry, we'll be taking everyone's. I had a headache, went to bed early. What time would that be, Mrs Strange? Around half past nine. Your husband didn't come to see you before he went out for the evening? He may have done. I was asleep. He didn't mention that he'd been up to see you. Well then, why are you asking me? Are you angry with your husband for some reason? With Neville? No. I'm not angry with Neville. Then who are you angry with? I went to bed early, so I really can't tell you much. Do you know if poor Mary's going to be all right? Do you know Mary well, Mrs Strange? Or does she seem like the type to take an overdose? Mary was a kind person. We all cared for her. Did she put anyone's back up last night, maybe? Uh, not to my knowledge. It was just a normal dinner. Any idea how that French window got broken then? A uh, storm, I suppose. I wasn't here. It's funny, that. You're sitting right in front of me. But you don't seem like you're here now, either. Have you got something to hide, Mrs Strange? No. No. I... It was just all very normal. What one person calls normal can be far from it. Excuse my intrusion into your private affairs, but will you explain how you come to be in this house now? I always come in September. My husband, my ex-husband, Neville, and his wife, Kay, wanted to come at the same time, and he asked if I would mind. It was his suggestion? Oh, yes. The current Mrs. Strange believes it was your idea. I'm afraid Kay is mistaken. But you agreed to the idea. I didn't want to be disobliging. It was you who divorced your husband, wasn't it? Yes. It was. Do you feel any rancour against him? No, not at all. You have a very forgiving nature. We get on fine. Neville would get on with anyone. But you, Mr Latimer, you like him despite the fact he stole Kay from you. I never had Kay. 
I couldn't afford her. So you make do with playing second fiddle. So many forgiving natures hereabouts. Did you want to ask anything in particular, Inspector? What were you doing last night? Between 10 p.m. and midnight in particular? I was at the Easter Head all night. Neville came over to play cards. Seemed a bit down. Did he say why that was? <laughs> we get on, but he'd hardly unburden himself to me. And yet, he went all that way, late at night, to see you. Well, he wanted to get out of here, I should think. Gets a bit much with both wives in tow, you know. He said he couldn't find you at first. I was in the lounge all night. You're certain about that, Mr. Latimer? I may have strolled into the gardens for five minutes. If Neville was in a mood, he might not have looked that hard. Might have made straight for the bar. You should check with... We the... already have. Thank you. Look, what's the idea of checking up on Strange? You don't think he did it? They had the most awful row. Strange and his wife. Audrey? <laughs> she would never do anything so vulgar. It was Kay and Neville screaming at each other for all to hear. I don't suppose you know what the row was about, do you, Mr. Royd? Well, Neville wants a divorce and to remarry Audrey. Well, he can want what he likes. Kay won't divorce him and Audrey won't marry him. I see. He also had a row with Lady Tresillian. Did he? Really? She was threatening to cut Neville out of the will and he wasn't too happy about it. Not too happy at all. Roy despises Neville. You can't trust his evidence. Results back from the laboratory, Inspector. Thank you, Constable. Now this we can trust. Whose prints were on the niblick? Constable, get Neville Strange in here now. Sir. Royd was quite right to despise Strange. The man murdered his own stepmother. Uh, wait. I've just realised why it doesn't add up. Lady Tresselian and Mary. It's inconsistent. Lady Tresselian's murder looks like it was done in the heat of the moment, an unpremeditated crime of passion. So, Neville rowed with the old lady, went and got his club and did her in. But the sleeping pills are part of a plan, cool and premeditated. The two don't fit. There's more to this murder. We're missing something. The only prints on the weapon are Neville's. No one else could have touched it, or the prints would be smeared. I also have the motive. Neville is the main beneficiary of the will, but he wouldn't have been if Lady Tresselian was alive today to change it. And he's even got the deformity of the little killer your Mr. Treves was so obsessed with. A short little finger. Other people have deformities and motives. Other people have reason to hate Neville to frame him. You can't arrest him yet. I'm the inspector here, and I've solved this crime. Mr. Strange, sir. Constable, could you escort Mr. Werther out? What's going on? Mr. Wait, Please, wait! Neville Strange. I'm arresting you for the murder of Lady Camilla Tresselian. What is it, Audrey? Oh, I thought I was alone. Are you upset about Neville? It must be awful to be locked up. I shouldn't think he'd be gone for long. You don't think he did it? I, I don't know. I came down here because it's normally so lovely after a storm. Fresh and clear. It's still so close. Like there's more to come. Audrey, if you know something that could help Neville, you have to tell me. But if Neville is released, then everyone will think it was me. Who would think that? Why? Of all of them. The way they look at me. Even poor Thomas. I, he must hate me too. Because you choose Adrian over him when Neville left you? Well, because Adrian died. It's all my fault. It was an accident, wasn't oh, it? I can't answer any more questions. That inspector, I felt like I was moving further and further away. Like it didn't matter what I said because he couldn't hear. Just tell him the truth, Audrey. That's all you have to do. I I'll come with you. Lady Tresselian asked me to look after you. She cared for you very much. You're very kind, but you can't come with me, Mr. McWhirter. I just want to wait here. Alone. To help him, Teddy. Oh, if Neville's innocent, he'll be walking free in no time. Of course he's innocent. And since when do you trust the police? Oh, I'm just glad they're not pinning it on me for once. At least I have an alibi. <laughs> You'd think Neville would have been smart enough to have sorted that out. He would have been. So you see, he must be innocent. But would it be so bad if he weren't? If he were hanged, you'd get all the money. We would. Teddy, you mustn't say that. Especially not here. <laughs> Mr. Latimer. Um, 
Can I have a word, please? By all means, McWerther. So, I heard you're a bent copper, is that right? No, it's not. And that's not all you've got wrong, is it? <laughs> Still thinks he is a copper, by the sounds of it. Didn't Leach tell you this case was closed? It'll be wide open when I tell him what I've found out, Mr Latimer. But I thought I'd give you the chance to come clean first. What's he talking about, Teddy? Search me. Kay, why don't you go and find us some drinks so I can set him straight, eh? That might be a wise idea, Mrs Strange. I'm not going anywhere. What have you done, Teddy? I, I didn't do anything. I was at the Easter Head all night, but not always in the lounge. I lied about that, but not because I'm a killer. And, and not to frame Neville. Where were you? No more lies, Latimer. I was uh, upstairs. I have to pay my way to follow you around somehow, OK? And sometimes rich old ladies want more than dancing lessons. Oh, Teddy. I was trying to protect you, my darling. Oh. How did you find out, McWhirter? I didn't. I just knew there had to be a hole in the case somewhere, so I took a chance on you. I'm glad you did. This must help Neville, mustn't it, Mr. McWhirter? Makes no difference at all. We have the prince. Uh, Neville would have been clever enough to get rid of his prince. It's all too perfect. Stop trying to complicate things. Put yourself in Neville's shoes last night. He'd been denied a divorce and cut out of the will. He did the deed and fled to the Easter Head. All Latimer's lie proves is that Neville definitely had no alibi. But what about Mary's overdose? That still doesn't fit. It does, if I was right all along. She'd had a miserable life and decided to end it that night. There are such things as coincidences, which you'd know if you'd worked your way up on case after case of stupid mistakes and bad time. As far as I'm concerned, the only perfect murder is a solved one, and this one is just perfect. Excuse me, Inspector Leach. What is it, Sergeant? It's Mary Alden, sir. She's woken up. Send me a report. I'm heading back to the yard. Yeah, very good, sir, but I thought you should know. Miss Alden says she saw Neville Strange leave the house at 10.30, as he said... But then she went in to see Lady Tresellian. Mary saw Lady Tresellian alive and well after Neville had left. So he can't be the killer. Thank you, McWhirter. We've all worked that out. Damn it. Would you like any help unpacking, Inspector? No. But I'd welcome any insights you might have as to who would frame Neville Strange. Welcome home, darling. <laughs> you do know your release is entirely down to me. You should have seen Audrey's face when I told her you were free. Is she all right? Where is she? Oh, who cares? Come on, I've organised a little tournament to celebrate your freedom. Everyone can join in. Winner stays on. Sometimes, little Kay, I think you really do love me. You're my husband. I'll never release you from that. You needn't think I'll let you in. His current wife seemed pretty unwavering, wanting to get him cleared. You know, anyone can see she's soulmates with Latimer. The only thing keeping them apart is money. Kay would get the money if Lady Tresellian was dead and Neville was hanged. Oh, so she thinks. But the lawyers say the will was worded badly. It's actually Neville's wife at the time the will was signed who would get off the money. And that's Audrey, not Kay. But Kay didn't know that. Neither did Latimer. Out. Sorry, darling. Do you want to try again? No. Let Ted have a turn. Teddy? I hope you're ready for this, Neville. Latimer puts up a front for Kay's sake, but he must detest Neville. Latimer has the cold blood to kill Lady Tresillian, and every reason to frame Neville for it. And his rich spinster ran a mile from giving an alibi. His head shape interested Mr. Treves. Sure sign of criminality, he claimed. That kind of evidence went out with the other. <laughs> yes. But it's sure that Treves had noticed it. The kind of deformity his little killer might have had. Out! Oh. Sorry, Latimer. Anyone else? Royd? I'll play you with my left hand, if that'll help. I've killed better men than you with this hand. Give me that. Hey. Do you still think Royd's a good man? Distinguished record. But where does all that aggression go now? He's the one who sold Strange down the river. He told you all about the rouse. I discounted it because of the arm. But watching him now... Well, he's been like that all his life. No doubt he's adjusted. Maybe even stronger because of it. Out! Bad luck, Roy! This damn thing! Hey, that's my racket! 
Easy, Royd. It's only a Get game. Get away from me, Strange. Now we can't play. Yes, we can. I've got my spare racket somewhere. Wait here. Hang on. Audrey Strange isn't here. Where is she? Why couldn't she be the killer? Because she has no deformity. She has no flaws at all. Doesn't she have the most reason to hate Neville? After he left her for Kay. Had a total breakdown, I heard. Plus, she gets half the money, all of it, if he'd been hanged. And she'd have known about the will, even if Kay didn't. That would give us satisfaction, the look on Kay's face. I don't think Audrey's like that. What is she like? I've interviewed her twice now, and she's pretty inscrutable. All I knew was that she was holding out on us for some reason. She is holding out, but not because she's guilty. I think she's scared. You know who gets scared, Mr. McWhorter? Guilty people. Constable, go and find Audrey Strange. Sir. Check her room. What about Mary Alden? She could have taken the overdose so we wouldn't even consider her as a suspect. She could have taken just enough to knock herself out, but nowhere near enough to kill herself. Why would she have anything against Neville? She wouldn't, but she has a thing for Thomas, which could be reason enough to hate Audrey. This Neville business could have all been a mistake. And that's why Mary panicked when she woke up and made sure that she cleared him. Because it wasn't him that she was framing. It was Audrey. And now you're falling into Mary's trap. Sorry, McWhorter, don't buy it. Too elaborate. But so was the murder that Mr. Treves talked about. And Mary has the flaw, the, the white streak in her hair. I, I'm not saying it's, it's Mary for sure. I'm, I'm just saying this killer is smart. We can't be sure of anything yet. Inspector! Oh, oh, Mr. Strange. You might want to take a look at this. What in the name? I found it in the cupboard right at the back. It used to be my spare racket, but someone sawn the head off and screwed... Well, Lord knows what onto the end. Come on, Neville. Oh, what on earth is that? It looks like one of the steel balls from the fireplaces upstairs. Looks like a murder weapon to me. And it's got my prints all over it again. We'll get it analysed, see who else has been handling it. No sign of Audrey Strange, sir, but the men have been searching the rooms again. They found this. Uh, is this your ex-wife's glove, Mr Strange? Neville, tell them. Of course it's Audrey's. She has lots of gloves. It was hidden in the ivy outside her window, sir. Not surprising, when it's spattered with blood. <gasps> it was Audrey. I knew it. She thought she could get one over on me, but I was on to her from the start. But Audrey has no physical peculiarity. How would you know? Why don't we ask Mr. Strange? Does Audrey have any physical flaw? No. I, I don't think Stop so. Stop covering for her, Neville. She has a scar. A dog bite on her ear. She usually hides it with earrings. Was she wearing them when Mr. Trees was here? She lost one when she danced with my husband. Audrey isn't the killer. We're still missing something. You're missing some grey cells if you think it was Audrey. She couldn't harm anyone. <laughs> Audrey's been plotting this all along. Can't you see she's evil? I can see quite clearly. Innocent people don't run. Guilty people run. Now, where would she run to? If you know Neville, tell him. I, I don't know. I've just remembered. When I saw Audrey this morning, she was asking me about France.
you scared of? I'm getting hanged. Are you guilty? No, but there's no way I can prove it. No one will believe me. I believe you. And I believe that if you could commit murder, you'd be a survivor. You'd do anything rather than give up your life. It's the innocent who give way to fear, who see no way out other than this. But there is. Believe me, I've done it. You? I jumped from Stark Head. And I don't recommend it. You? Why would you? Didn't you hear I was a bent copper? I didn't believe it. Everyone else did. It ruined my life, my career. I tried to keep going, but in the end, I went further than you. One step further. But you survived. Lady Tresellian saw me from her window. She saved me. Tore a strip off me too for being so stupid. And she was right. The innocent have to stay and fight or else the guilty will get away with it. Don't you remember what Mr. Treve said about the child killer who's playing the part of a normal adult now? but is free to kill again? Whoever it is will keep getting away with it if we don't do something now. <laughs> Lady Tresselian said that fate saved me, not her. That was all part of some grand plan and I was kept alive for a purpose. I didn't believe it at the time, but now, now I know she was right. How do you know? Because I'm here now to save your life. But the police are already looking for me. I was a pretty good policeman. I knew it wasn't you. Now we need enough evidence so that the inspector will believe us. But all the evidence will point to me. I know it. That's why I would rather go I this won't way. let you hang. And you won't try to kill yourself again, Audrey. That's another thing Lady Tresselian taught me. So, she saved us both, in a way. Yes. All from that little window across the bay. Yes. From that little window. Well... What is it? Something. Maybe. Will you come back to the house? Give yourself up to Inspector Leach. I thought you believed I was innocent. I do. But now we have to be even cleverer than the killer. I need you to be brave, Audrey. And I'm not feeling very brave. Oh, you have to forget how you really feel. Cover that up. The killer is banking on you being scared. But if you can put up a front, play a different part that no one is expecting then maybe we can get one step ahead. Do you think you can do that, Audrey? She's given us the slip. But we'll find her, Mr. Strange, don't you worry. My only worry is you're wasting your time. Audrey is no murderer. Has no one told you? The prints on the handle of the weapon are yours, Mr. Strange, and your wife, Kay. Yes, it was my spare racket. Kay uses it sometimes. I, I told you that there'd be no evidence to link Audrey. The steel ball on the end of the weapon has been found to belong to the fender in Audrey's fireplace. There were also unmistakable signs that someone else touched the handle of the weapon after yourself and Kay. Someone wearing gloves. The blood on Audrey's glove has been analysed. It's not Camilla's. It can't be. It's a perfect match. Anyone could have used Audrey's glove. It proves nothing. It's one piece of the jigsaw. Perhaps you can give me another. Are you sure it was your own idea for you all to meet at Gull's Point in September? Or on reflection, might it have been suggested by Audrey? Audrey did nothing of the sort. Your wife says you assured her it was Audrey's idea. Well, of course that's how I'd have to put it to Kay, but no. I mean, Audrey and I were talking and it just came up. I'm pretty sure it was my idea. But not as sure as you were. Oh, you can't seriously be imagining that Audrey would have made all these elaborate preparations to get us here, to create that hideous weapon and use it to strike down an old lady she's known for years just to get her hands on half the inheritance. You have no idea, have you? From first to last, this crime was directed against you, Mr Strange. Ever since you left her, Audrey has been brooding over her revenge. Oh. She's become mentally unbalanced. Perhaps she always was. She will have thought of killing you, but that would put her at risk. So she decided to get someone else to do it, namely myself and my colleagues in the criminal justice system. Audrey Strange wanted you hanged for murder. You don't understand. She loves me. She chose an evening when you'd quarrelled with Lady Tresellian. An inevitable quarrel, given the untenable situation she had engineered here. And she struck the old lady down. She smeared the weapon with blood and laid it down by the bed, knowing we would find only your fingerprints on it. If Mary hadn't seen you leaving the house whilst Lady Tresellian was still alive, you would have been ready to hang by now, 
Audrey's plan would have worked. No. Audrey's never held a grudge against me. She's the straightest, truest creature. Thank you, Neville. Inspector Leach, I believe you've been looking for me. Mrs Strange, I have a warrant here for your arrest on the charge of murdering Lady Camilla Tresselli. I must caution you that anything you say will be written down and may be used as evidence at your trial. It's almost a relief. I'm glad it's over. Audrey, please, don't say a word. Why not, Neville? It's all true, and I'm tired. So tired. Crazy. Completely crazy. Pull yourself together, Neville. This has nothing to do with you, Royd. If it concerns Audrey, it does. I'm only here for her. I wasn't aware she invited you. I came here to ask Audrey to marry me. <laughs> and I would make a much better husband than you were. Audrey wouldn't marry you. Well, what makes you think she'd marry you again? Gentlemen, please. She won't be marrying any of us if we don't help her. Well, what do you mean, us? He doesn't stand a chance. Lady Tresselian asked me to protect Audrey. This is my last chance to carry out that wish. I need to prove she's innocent and catch the real killer, and I think you can help me. Is there anything you haven't told the police? Anything that might help Audrey? Nothing I can think of. Nothing that she'd want us to tell. Is there something that you both know? Well, Roy doesn't know the first thing about Audrey. I'd tell the man right now if I hadn't given her my word to protect her good name. She was going to kill herself, Royd. Off Stark Head, I stopped her. But I can't stop them hanging her without your help. Her good name will mean nothing if she's convicted. So tell me, what do you know? Yes, Roy, what do you think you know exactly? The truth about Audrey and Adrian. Your brother? Mother wrote to me about it to let me down gently. Adrian was always better with the ladies than me. Better than Neville, too. Adrian took Audrey from him before he'd even met Kay. So, you didn't leave Audrey for Kay? No. She left me and ran away with Adrian. Then Adrian was killed in a car accident. Poor Audrey was devastated. I tried to do the right thing, arrange things so that she could divorce me and I could take the blame. Stop her name getting dragged through the mud. Do you think this will clear her name, McWhorter? I think you need to tell the inspector. Both of you, right away. Don't you see? Audrey had no cause to hate me. On the contrary, she had reason to be grateful. And that was the seed why she fell back in love with me. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. But it certainly knocks out your motive, Inspector. And makes it more plausible that Neville engineered the meeting here. Naturally, when Neville asked her, Audrey felt she couldn't refuse him. Motive's only one thing. The facts still stand, and they all show she's guilty. All the facts show that I was guilty yesterday. That's true enough, but look at what you're asking me to believe. That there's someone here who hates both of you. Someone who, if the plot against you failed, had laid a second trail to lead to Audrey Strange. Can you honestly think of anyone who hates both you and your former wife? Think, man, there has to be. I know, but... When he puts it like that, it all sounds so fantastic. It is fantastic. Especially added to the fact that Audrey Strange can offer us no explanation. I could offer you no explanations, and I was innocent. I'm sorry, Mr. Strange, Mr. Royd. I've got to do my duty. We're taking Audrey to the mainland in an hour. This case is closed. Mary, quickly. I need your help. I'm no one's servant anymore, Mr. McQuarter. I need to find some rope, a good long piece, and it has to be strong. Not hanging Audrey yourself, are you? I'm hoping to set her free, if you'll help me. And why should I help? She tried to kill me. Do you really believe that, Mary? I thought you and Audrey were friends. Oh, I thought so too. But really, I have no idea who she is. She was always holding something back. And now we know why. What if you're wrong and she's innocent? That would make you a killer. But I've never hurt anyone. Sometimes I wish I had. Then at least I'd have done something. But I've done nothing. It's no wonder she thought I was dispensable. Well, why not do something now? Just this one thing, please, Mary. It could make all the difference. Oh! I knew I'd seen something when I was sorting Aunt Camilla's things. Ah, oh, is, is this the sort of thing you're after? Exactly. But this is damp. Oh, that's odd. There's no damp in here, un unless there's a leak. Everything around it's dry. 
Would you mind checking, Mary? I might need you to swear to it. Why? I, I don't see how this helps. You will see. And listen, if you get the chance to take one of those journeys over water, take it. If I... what? Just take it. Oh, <laughs> nice choice, Kate. <laughs> Shame we have to go. This place isn't so bad when we have it to ourselves. <laughs> we'll never have anywhere like this to ourselves. Maybe if things had worked out differently... Don't talk about that now. I'm just happy Audrey's gone. And I do love Neville, you know. So you keep saying, but I'll never quite believe you. It's not so bad, is it? There's even room for you at the villa, so you won't have to give any more dancing lessons for a while. <laughs> we'll still be together. Mm, the three of us. For now. But in the future, who knows? All I know is, I love you, Kay. Where you lead, I follow. So, stop talking and let me lead. <laughs> Sergeant Jones. Sir? I need to speak to you about your theory of who killed Lady Tresellian. Didn't know I had one. Well, the doctor said you wondered if it was a burglar. That was my first thought, but the inspector set me straight. That's why he's in the Met and I'm here. Well, I think you are on the right track all along. I'll explain everything, but first, I need you to find out about a murder that happened a long time ago. The defendant was a child, and the prosecutor on the case was a Mr. Treves. The old man who died of a heart attack. He was murdered. But can you make some calls and find out the child's identity? I know you're not from the Met, but... Well, I think I can manage it. What will you be doing? I need to see the ferryman before zero hour. The police are taking Audrey out. Come and look. I can't stand to. Kay, sit down. They've handcuffed her. Coward. What do they think she'd do? Hmm? Fake another suicide attempt for sympathy, maybe. <laughs> Doesn't look half so smug now. <laughs> She's looking right through me. She looks like a ghost already. She looks beautiful. What's happening? It's that McWhirter. What's he shouting? We should go out and see. Come on. Will you please just give me a minute, Inspector? I need to talk to you. To all of you, in fact. Hard luck. We've got a boat to catch. Then we'll come with you. All of us? Please, for Audrey's sake. You must be kidding. Good riddance to her. Kay, for God's sake. Uh, will you come, Mary, on the ferry across the water? Yes, all right, then. I'll come. Uh, what about you, Royd? You do still believe she's innocent, don't you? I don't know what you're up to, McQuarter. And for Audrey's sake... Thank you. And Neville? Yes, yes, of course. Come along, Kay. Why should I? I don't believe she's innocent. And neither does the inspector, and he's coming along. Mr Latimer? Oh, if you insist, we don't really care, do we, Kay? Look here, you can't do this! Sergeant Jones? It's a public ferry, not a police boat. Oh. Isn't it, Sergeant? Sorry, Inspector. We can't do anything to stop him. What's going on? Where are we Sorry, Inspector. Everyone, I've bribed the ferryman. It's my first brush with corruption. This isn't funny, McWhorter. No, it's not, Royd. But if I waited till we reached the other side, Audrey's fate would be sealed. I don't see what you can do about it now. I don't see why you'd want to do anything. I want to say something about murder. Something inspired by a wise man we all met. When you read a story about a murder, the murder is always at the beginning, but that's all wrong. The murder begins a long time beforehand. A murder is the culmination of a lot of different circumstances, all converging at a given moment, at a given point. People are brought into it from all different parts of the globe. Royd is here from Africa. Neville and Kay began their journey on the Riviera, followed as ever by Mr. Latimer. Thank you very much. I'm here because a chain of events led me to attempt suicide from just above us, up there, at Stark Head. But I survived to see the end of the story. The true murder that happens at zero hour. It's zero hour now. But what about Lady Tresellian's murder and the attempt on my life? And poor old Mr. Treves and perhaps Adrian's car accident. But these were only events along the way that have led us all here. The culmination of those events 
is the murder of Audrey Strange. Murder? But she is the killer. Exactly. Can we please get going? You Met Office is always in a rush. Just listen to the man for a minute. Our killer was in no rush. This crime was planned a long time ago. Planned down to the smallest detail so that Audrey Strange should be hanged by the neck till she was dead. It's cunningly planned by someone who thought themselves clever. Murderers are usually vain. There was first the superficial, unsatisfactory evidence against Neville Strange, which we were meant to see through. But having been presented with one set of faked evidence, it was not likely that we should consider a second instance of the same thing. And yet all the evidence against Audrey could be faked. The weapon taken from her fireplace, her glove tainted with blood and hidden by her window, even the left-handed fatal blow. It could all have been orchestrated by our killer. I felt that very strongly, but how could I prove it? Then I remembered the night that Lady Tresellian was killed, I was up there on Stark Head, lost in my thoughts so deeply that I didn't realize what I was seeing. I saw a rope hanging from the window below Lady Tresellian's. And climbing up the rope, I saw a man. A man? Why in God's name did you never mention this? Don't believe me, Inspector? Here's your evidence. This rope was hidden in the attic, still soaked with water from the storm. Mary can verify. So, yes, I, I can. It was an outsider. Someone from the other side of the river, yes, since he swam across. But someone in the house had to have the rope ready for him. And we know of someone who was on the other side of the river that night who has no alibi for the time of death. Someone with a friend on this side of the water. Don't we, Mr. Latimer? But, but um, I, I can't swim. Um, Kay, tell them I can't swim. Are you sure of that, Mr. Latimer? Are you mad? You'll drown! It's all right, sis. Oh, please don't fish him out. Help me. Over there, lad! Man overboard! Enough of this, Mr. I think you'd better tell us who you saw that I night. I had to eliminate Mr. Latimer from our inquiries, and that was the fastest way. Royd was never a possibility. He's strong in spite of his arm, but not strong enough to swim this river, to climb to the window. So that just leaves... Neville, you were always an excellent swimmer. Audrey, what are you talking about? You went over on the ferry at a quarter to eleven, Yet no one saw you at the Easter Head till 11.30. So you think that in that time I swam across the river and climbed up a rope? That you had left hanging from your window. Oh, naturally, and then I killed Camilla with my left hand, even though it's weaker. No, with your back hand, of course. Your best shot. Then you swam back to play cards with Latimer. This, this, this truly is fantastic. So who do you say laid all those clues against me? I suppose I laid them against myself. Naturally. Not a bad idea either. It almost worked. But why would I want to kill Camilla? To get me hanged. Because I left you for Adrian. It wasn't Audrey who was mentally imbalanced. It was you. <laughs> Ever since you were a child, playing with your bow and arrows. Sergeant Jones? The Crown versus Edgar Price. Acquitted and renamed Neville Strange. <laughs> Mr. Treve saw your little finger. Saw the killer in you. So you killed him before he could ruin your plan. Anyone who might do you injury gets killed. But death was too good for me, wasn't it? It had to be something special. You had to get me hanged, even if it meant you killing Camilla. Is it true, Neville? The woman is mad. Look at her. That's not Audrey. Not my Audrey. I hurt your vanity, did I? When I left you for Adrian. I'm sorry, Neville, but you just weren't good enough. You could never win the title, you could never keep me, and you could have pulled this off, however hard you tried. Audrey, this, this is just a game. You're trying to trap me. You're already trapped. The game's been up since I saw you on that rope. You weren't even meant to be here. This wasn't meant to happen. It was childish, really. Those crude trails pointed to you. Audrey and I guessed easily. It really made us laugh. <laughs> Thinking how hard you worked on your brilliant plan is quite pathetic. <laughs>
Take him away. Thank you for your assistance, Sergeant Jones. Good police work. It was Mr. McWhirter, really, sir. Oh, yes, Mr. McWhirter. May I have a word? Do you want to take my statement? Not now we have a confession, thank you, but I do want to wring your neck. Hmm? What the devil did you think you were playing at out there? Madman like Strange could have drowned himself and justice would never have been served. Neville wouldn't have killed himself. Men like that never do. Then I was wrong. It's the innocent who run. Like Audrey. And yourself. Yes, but unfortunately, I can't prove that. <sighs> let me have a word at the yard. Brain like yours, it'd be a shame to let it go to waste. I'm glad you think so, Inspector. But I think fate has something else in store for me. So, Audrey will get this place and all the inheritance. She deserves it after all she's been through. Besides, I'll get everything of Neville's. <laughs> you sound pleased. I thought you loved him. I didn't even know him. But you, Teddy, I know you. <laughs> <laughs> no more dancing lessons, then? Ever? Only for me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Spin me round. <laughs> that was a good thing you did there, Mary. Taking a stand before Aldrin. I didn't really do much. But I will. I'm free now, too. So what will you do now? What I've always wanted to do. Make my journeys across the sea. See the world. On her own. Who else would I go with? Ah. Well, I know a thing or two about travelling. Good old Thomas. Strong and, and safe. <laughs> and just what I need. <laughs> <laughs> Zero hour has passed. The storm's over now. Look, down there. They're all leaving Gulls Point. All going their separate ways. That's it. I knew there was something that didn't make sense. There was a storm the night Camilla was killed. You wouldn't even be able to see the house from here, let alone Neville climbing up a rope. You've found me out, Audrey. Well, I had to do something to make Neville confess, or else he'd get away with it. And you... <gasps> There's no need to be frightened anymore. Well, I think I used up all my bravery on the boat. I don't know where it came from. I've been scared so long. I knew you were scared when I first saw you. People said you were holding something in check, that love or hate, but really... It was fear, wasn't it? I was scared of Neville ever since we were married, but I didn't know why. It got worse when I lost Adrian. I was sure something wasn't right, but Neville was being so good to me. I thought I was going mad. He played the part of a good sportsman, but I put a strain on him underneath. He started to crack. And when I got here, it was like a nightmare. I knew something was going to happen, that Neville meant it to happen to me. I didn't know what... It was like a dream when you're in danger and you can't move. Like a snake that fascinates a bird so that it can't fly away. You were like a frightened bird struggling to escape. And now you've saved my life again. You don't have to feel obliged to me. In fact, I should be going now too. No, don't go. Hmm? I mean... What exactly do you mean, Audrey? I mean, can we start again? From zero? To 
together. Come. <laughs>